All right, whoa, ladies and gentlemen, we got a lot of motorcycles to see, a lot of stories to tell. Sit back, relax. Welcome to Exotic Cycle. Let's go. As an added bonus, some pretty amazing scenery on the way to this motorcycle shop. Look at this bridge. But I promise you, the view is even better inside those walls. Hope everybody's doing great. Sit back, relax, because we're here. Exotic Cycle, Sarasota, Florida. Johnny Turbo Dobrin is his name, and he is one of the top tuners, top motorcycle builders in the state of Florida. He's also a highly decorated motorcycle drag racing, real street champion. We're gonna see what we can find here in the showroom. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. Oh, we got a whole lot to see in here. Sit back and relax. Well, guys, I am super excited for this tour. Let's see if we can find the man himself. There he is, ladies and gentlemen, Johnny Turbo. Let's get it right. Dobrin, so nice to see you. How you Haven't doing? seen you in quite some time. Announced this man for many, many years. So happy to be here at Exotic Cycle, or as my GPS says, Exitica Soul. I don't know what, what Surrey, Surrey was doing on the way down, but man, uh, we have some treasure in here and you have really carved out a niche down here in Florida as one of the top tuners of sport bikes. Tell me a little bit about your business. Uh, I guess I started in 96. I've been at this property right here for 20 years. Uh, kind of started off just specializing in Suzuki performance. It's kind of been my niche. Uh, drag racing since I was probably 18 years old. Started with a actually a Nighthawk S and then a GS 1100 and GS 1000 and then my first GSXR and it went on and on. I've had every single oil cooled GSXR and water cooled. Still have some, in fact, I'll show you them in a minute. Um, but yeah, I've been doing this for a good little while. We got a dyno here, CNC machine. I'm the guy that invented the bolt-on swing arm extension. Oh. Uh, oh. Kind of bought this property years ago. I thought it was really clever. I was tired of taking swing arms off and welding and all that. And so I got an idea. Light bulb went off and there you go. You Very can actually cool. see even the early font is engraved on that old one over there. <laughs> Let's check it out, guys. We got some motorcycles to see. Well, you can tell it's Florida. It's hot. That's okay. It's not it snowing. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what's hot, and that is the Suzuki Hayabusa, because Suzuki changed the motorcycle market in 1999 when they came out with this juggernaut. You bought one right away. This is a 99 Busa. Tell me about what led you to this purchase. Well, actually, when it first came out, I thought they were ugly. Well, so did a lot of people. It took a lot of people a while to get used to yeah, it. Yeah, right? it had to grow on me. And we I was see like, that with oh, vets man. and things like that. Yeah, because I was racing a 91 GSXR 1100 at the time, and uh, I thought the high boost was kind of ugly, but after a few months, I was like, I got to have one. Uh, I actually bought this one out of Pennsylvania. It was slightly damaged from a fall over, and I you know, fixed it up, put it back together. So that's, you know, that's a long time. So I've had this bike in the family that whole time. Uh, it's had different transformations as, you know, been a street bike, was a race bike, had big motor in it. Now it's got a pretty small, pretty simple motor in it. Uh, I let D-Mac Horta race this thing for oh years. Boy. Oh boy. Uh, he threw it on the ground for me and I fixed it up after that. But um, That happens to a few of the boosts every yeah, now and again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've, uh, I'm, I managed to keep it. You know, I've gone through a bunch of stuff, but that, that bike I've kept for a long time and probably will never sell it. I've had so many people try to buy it. Kind of like that 1990 GSXR 100 right there. So many people have tried to buy that bike from me. Well, cool. We'll check it out. And I see a lot of your parts on display. The swing arm extensions that you talked about, the triple clamp, which helps lower the bike. Mm -hmm. uh, it seems like you, you make a lot for this. How many parts do you make for the Hayabusa? Oh, I don't know. Dozens. Dozens. Yeah. Um, uh, brake brackets, uh, brake holders, the swing arm extensions. I used to make clutch covers. I don't anymore, thanks to Voodoo. Uh, <laughs> I make clutch lockups, uh, spacer plates, a top triple clamp, cool little gauge holders, um, some bottle brackets, just little knickknacks. That's a beautiful bike. I love it. Let me ask you this before we leave this one. Um, you know, you being a motorcycle guy, KZ, GS, all these legendary runs, did you ever think we'd see 20 plus years? of the Hayabusa. We are now on Gen 3. I mean, how has this motorcycle really stood the test of time? I, I, you know, it's, it sells. You know, that's what 
that's kept it alive is you know the market for high boots is they put them out there they move you know they they, they can't keep them on show floors and you know it's it's a legendary bike it's it's incredible it's, it's comfortable it performs well it can be drag raced you know really the high boots is well suzuki in general you know their racing bikes have been the small block chevy of, of motorcycles so all the parts are made for these things so it's it's definitely the way to go if you're into drag racing Yes, it is. If you have a Suzuki Hayabusa or any thoughts about one, let us know down below in the comments. Now, Johnny, I got to ask you about this. Some people say swing arm extensions are dangerous. I'm sure you can dispel that with this photo. Tell me about it. Well, yeah, if you look down here, this was speed and strength. This is the bull. This bike went 780s with those bolt-on extensions right there you see in the picture. Wow. Before it became a real street bike. So you believe the extension's every bit as safe as... Well... I mean, Yanashiyis, there's some other off, knockoff brands that, you know, I don't, I can't vouch for those, but my stuff, like my Suzuki stuff, especially, I make extremely strong. You have a hard time breaking that off your swing arm with a sledgehammer. Take a look, guys. Make sure you buy from the right place. All right, you referenced the legendary 1990 GSXR. Let's jump backwards nine years. Tell me about this thing and just looking at it, how far Suzuki leaped forward with the Hayabusa. Well, actually, this bike's pretty impressive. This thing went 10 O's, you know. Ooh. I don't even know how many years ago, which is almost as fast as my Busa went when it was stopped. That's amazing back then. I mean, now we're used to high Busas hitting the nines right off the showroom floor, but to run tens back then, that was stout. That was pretty impressive. You know, these bikes are really cool. This uh, 1990 GSXR 1100, all factory bodywork, stock wheels, um, nice Yosh carbon exhaust. Done the pretty, pretty slick little Yosh carvers. It's got a... Uh, European Canadian 40 millimeter CV carbs on it, which is pretty neat for a US bike. Uh, and I've had that since the 90s. I, I think I've, gosh, probably 95 or something I've had that since. So that's a long time. It's an amazing motorcycle. I take it this one will never be for sale either, huh? No, and, <laughs> and I've had so many, I, literally probably 100 people have tried to buy that from me. In fact, I listed that other Hayabusa a couple months ago, and this was in the background, and everyone kept asking, <laughs> what about that 90-1100 in the background? Well, that's what, you know, that's what's cool about motorcycles. As a wise man once told me, it's like a 1988 Ford Ranger isn't really cool, but an 88 motorcycle, a 78 motorcycle, motorcycles as they get older, they, they get even cooler. Yeah. Well, old cars are pretty cool, too. Old yeah. hot rods are cool, too, that's for sure. Yeah, I got a 93 Fox body out there. It's pretty cool. Right? Yes, it is. <laughs> this thing is awesome, though. That's a neat. Well, here's what we don't want to see anybody do, but when you push the limits, when you have this much horsepower, sometimes these things happen in drag racing. But as evidenced by this display, Johnny almost always gets the tune-up right on his bikes. I hope you guys are loving this tour. I want to thank you again. I told you we have some history in here. You ready for this one? First GSXR 1000 to go in the sevens. It is a 2003. Yep. Tell me about this amazing motorcycle. Uh, this is a really cool piece. This was a, um, before really anybody did Turbo 1000s, I was kind of uh, hanging out with Barry and Velocity. And Barry Hansen. He did an 01 1000. Uh, and then I bought the kit that was on that first bike. And then I started building this one kind of on the side. And when I got this done, this thing was really fast, really cool. Made 411s in a wheel. Uh, it's got turbo and nitrous on it and a fully built motor. Uh, Mike Slow is the one that actually helped me kind of get it refined sure. and into the sevens. One of the greatest clutch hands ever who oh, we're talking yeah, about. He's a badass yeah. for sure. Um, and uh, we ended up doing a big fancy grudge race in Bradenton years ago. Um, Sean Gann came down. Oh, and wow. Rode, Rest in uh, peace. Uh, yeah. Swerve, this guy Swerve had a, another 1,000. He claimed he was the fastest 1,000. We claimed we were the fastest 1,000. So we got, you know, it was all on cycle bike and, you know, all this oh, back, back and forth thing and whatnot. So we set up a race. It came down in January or whatever. Well, I think, yeah, January, there's a big, you know, run day Sunday that we used to grudge race at. And uh, Sean Gann flew in, wearing his cool, fancy red suit and everything. And and HRA. Mikey was all kind of, you know, Mikey's just too cool. And, and, uh, that we were supposed to run like, you know, 67 inch street tire and they showed up 71 inch with a slick on it. <laughs> and uh, we ran them anyway. Uh -huh. uh, of course they beat us to the eighth, but Mikey managed to pass them before the quarter. It was pretty cool. We wow. went, I, I don't, I think it went like 784 or something on that pass. Uh, I think he went like an 8.0 or an 8.1 or something. So 
we definitely drove around them on the big end. Well, there can only be. Power. He was pretty surprised. It was like for five grand or something. It was a pretty cool race. Yeah, it was a bunch of people out there that day. We're gonna have to dig up some footage of that one. Yeah, that would be pretty cool. There only could be one first, and this one was first. Yeah. Yep. Share with a friend who loves Jixers first seven second street tire GSXR. Let's see what else we can find here. Oh, we got some more classics. Nine. 1996 ZX11 finally restored Johnny good work tell me about this one how'd you end up with a cow <laughs> Mr. Suzuki a cow it is uh, actually I bought it for one of my customers it was blowed up and ugly and I uh, you know built a motor for it and took it down to the frame and you know polished powder coated painted whatever replaced some brakes new chain Put a nice exhaust on it, you know, had uh, Mike Sancho paint it, and just basically restored the thing completely and made a real nice bike out of it. It's a good ride, a little cruiser street bike for somebody. It's gorgeous. You're going to end up selling it. Also, this one will leave the collection. It will, yeah. Okay. I don't keep cowies. Uh, well, if somebody's watching this video, which they do, get a hold of Exotic Cycle, yeah, they may want to yeah. buy it. Yeah, they can find me. How's that one compare on the street to some of the modern bikes? Uh, very comfortable. It's kind of like an early, you know, Hayabusa mentality. It's, 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 you know, it's a sporty bike, but it's heavy cruiser, comfortable. Um, you know, these things, you know, when they came out were ridiculously fast. I remember, I remember seeing quite a few of these at the drag strip. So here you go, Cycle Drag Universe. Here's one in this video you can actually own. You got to call Johnny at Exotic Cycle. Mention Cycle Drag if you'll want it. right up you said you haven't cranked it up in months and it cranked yeah. right up yeah how about that i need to pull it out and drive it around pull the spider webs out of it maybe somebody else will decide to do that for you guys come on come get it and that leads us to one of the most successful motorcycles of all time one that i certainly recognize you with if you watch cycle drag you probably have seen johnny turbo win some races on this one Arguably one of the most successful real street bikes of all time to let you guys know real street is a class a lot like pro street But the bikes are more true to street form yeah. and this thing's been in the 760s mm -hmm. four-time champion. Yeah, it crazy. Tell me about this bike uh, This bike actually a guy that worked for me and my machine uh, Bought this brand new across the street at the Suzuki dealership when these came out the gen 2 came out Went over there and bought a gen 2 right away started making parts prototype the extensions for them, you know, making clutch stuff. That's where I make that neat uh, brake caliper bracket for it. You know, it was all kind of used for a mock-up bike originally. And then slowly it transformed into more and more. Um, I ended up taking this thing and, and, and um, you know, making it turn, slowly turning it into a real street bike. This bike went in the sevens with bolt-on extensions on it. Uh, I was sponsored by Speed and Strength, and so that's where that other picture that I showed you sure, came from. Sure, sure. Um, this thing, is, there's a bunch of cool videos of this thing and Ricky Gadsden on his ZXs oh, yeah. going oh, back yeah. and forth, yeah. you know. That's five, a great six, rivalry. 2011 and 12. Uh, I was oh. running, I'm trying to remember what it was. It was Real Street and Man Cup, and then I wanted to start running the My Rock My series, series, and the rules were different. There was no piggyback injector allowed, so kind of just got a hair one day. I was like, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna figure out how to do this. Cause it had a Microtech piggyback with a different type of plenum with another set of injectors on it. So I bought an RCC injector rail. I put the big injectors on the top side. I run the Suzuki injectors on the bottom, wired the Microtech to the top side of the you know main injectors. No more piggyback. Take a little peek, the plenum has just a basic. All right, what are we looking at turbo? This intake plenum has no injectors in it. All the injectors are in the factory location, which was the Myrock rules. Wow. 
and then I proceeded to go to my first My Rock race, and I think I went like 783, set the record. I think I qualified first, but I got beat in the finals. Well, that's pretty cool that you committed to that series because we know Sarasota and Bud's Creek, Maryland, that's no hop, skip, and a yeah, jump. A I'm sure. mile cruise real quick. I'm I've sure the that. shop had to be closed for a couple days, right? Oh, yeah. I've done that trip a whole bunch like, of that's times. That's what we tell people about racing. You know, they understand you got to test on Thursday, race Friday, Saturday, Sunday. But for a lot of guys, that's also closing the shop on two days each end, right? So, oh, yeah, yeah. It's some downtime. For so we shop. admire your commitment. But I'm sure you wouldn't trade the memories or the plaques for anything, huh? No, no, no. I've been doing this for 30 years, so I'm kind of retired now. And this bike's kind of retired. Um, thought about either turning it back into a street bike, maybe selling it, letting somebody do something else with it, maybe making it a grudge bike. I don't know. Oh, it's over my here. gosh. I over here using it to flash ECUs. Well, I can tell you what Jason Miller's going to say when he sees this video. He's going to say, bring it back out. Oh, everybody says, aren't you coming out? Aren't <laughs> Come you coming on, out? cherry pick a couple real street <laughs> races, you yeah. know? It would be cool to see, guys. It is a piece of history. Like I said, you've seen him win. That won the $5,000 shootout. Remember? That's right. Remember, we had that $5,000 shootout. I got to yeah. say big thanks. That was the brainchild of uh, Rick Linder and I were working together at Maryland with the IDBL. And that was when Jason Miller had something really, really cool for the pro street bikes. We said, we need to do something for the real street bikes. Yeah. Let's put up some money for them. And I, I remember messaging you, can you come up here? We got five grand. You said, all right. He came up. <laughs> he came I up and won. I that five grand. Yes, I did. He came up. There's some really cool videos. My buddy Johnny going 5G. <laughs> he won it all. One of the funniest videos ever. What a legacy. What a memory. Well, hopefully Johnny's racing days aren't really over, but if they are, he has certainly put in a career to be proud of. Take a look at all these accolades, all these trophies, hard-earned and well-deserved. I hope you guys are enjoying this tour from Exotic Cycle, Sarasota, Florida. We still got a lot of great bikes to see. Make sure you watch till the end. Leave any comments if you have any questions or if you had any of these motorcycles. If you ever saw Johnny race, let us know down below in the comments. Let's see what other motorcycles we can find here at Exotic Cycle. Well, Johnny, you're rocking and rolling, and I can tell you there's really not that many places in the country anymore to get high-performance motorcycle work done. You are a dying breed. You've got customers' bikes in here, grudge bike, and a mean boost. So tell me about what we're looking at. Uh, this was a bike that got upgraded from a like a Stage 1 style turbo to an R, uh, um, On 3 big turbo and uh, kind of changed the fuel system around and made it work a little better, made it make 415 horsepower. Jeez. Uh, and then look at this beautiful thing. bike. He's a local guy, uh, built that years ago. It's pretty close to 400 horsepower. It's mostly just a street, street Ooh, racing bike. Oh my goodness, a lot of motorcyclists down here in Florida. You being a drag racing guy and knowing what these bikes are really capable of, do you sometimes have pause when guys come in and they tell you they want four or 500 horsepower and you're like, oh, what's your experience level? Yeah, I mean, of course, everyone, you know, you gotta, that's, that's not for everybody, I wouldn't think, you know. Well, and it's amazing what you do too, because what we're finding out here is dealers won't touch a lot of these bikes, right? No, is there? No, not, no, no deal. Everybody, they don't even want to build an engine even for late model stuff. <laughs> well, that's why you got to get here and do exotic cycle. Look at this. This is certainly an exotic cycle. All right, old school fans. They thought we were going old school when we showed them the 1990 bike. No, 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 I'm talking about one of the staples, the War Horse, the Suzuki GS. And this one is incredible, a pro street bike. Tell me about this monster. Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a trick piece right there. That actually belonged to Gary Kramer, which was Mike Slow's buddy and my okay. friend who, you know, used to come down here all the time and keep his boat in the parking lot over here. And, uh, when he passed away, uh, his daughter inherited it. And she sold it to Mike, and I bought it for Mike Slow. Uh, it's a 1500. Good I Lord. believe Dan Wagner built the motor. Dan Demand. Um, it's got a nice track arm. It's got some stuff you can't track. get anymore. The paint is beautiful on it. It's a trick piece. It's a hot rod. It's probably 230 horsepower. Oh. It's definitely a certified gangster. Street legal, too. Now, I imagine with the sentimental value, this one, not for sale. Not really not for sale guys but it's beautiful enjoy it what's this bike like on the street i mean this is effectively a drag bike out on the street right yeah and that's all i've done is just cruise the bike nights that's what it's for and it's a bruiser it's kind of fun this is not one you want to jump on and go to sturgis i imagine but no, no. <laughs> I think it's probably but hey we just talked to paul tuttle up in florida i mean he he says that's what a lot of his bikes were designed for bike nights they weren't designed to go cross country no right and that's the same kind of thing this is like something like you know 
but made out of a GS with a bunch of horsepower. Very cool, it's Johnny. Nasty. You can barely give it gas without blowing the tire off oh. third. <laughs> Johnny Turbo's version of an Orange County chopper, but a whole lot faster. So cool. I know my GS guys love this. Look at the throwback checks from back in the day. Speaking of throwback, here's some old school Suzuki's. And I got to thank Johnny Turbo big time for helping put some fresh rubber on the cycle drag Hayabusa. But one thing you may have caught out of the corner of your eye, Kent Stotts, what is that doing in here? We got to get the lowdown. Johnny, this is a piece of history I did not expect to see in here. Kent Stotts' is Blackbird, what is this doing in here? I'm actually just storing it for Kent. Uh, it was over in a museum in Daytona for Bike Week. Uh, I believe it was at Bill Hahn's place in Florida. Um, Kent called me and said, hey, can I have my bike, can I keep my bike at your shop real quick? I said, sure, no problem. This is the first seven second street tire turbo bike in the world. That's right. Brock and Kent were neck and neck. Brock did it with a nitrous bike. Kent did it with a turbo bike. This thing is awesome. What's this mean to you have it in your shop? I mean, that's pretty cool, huh? It yeah, is a museum in here. It's a museum history. Actually, it was in a museum. There's a cool little Kent Stotts statue sitting there, which is kind of creepy in the middle of the <laughs> cameras. <laughs> Maybe good to deter thieves, though. This is awesome. Yeah. All right, maybe it is just a little bit creepy, but there's nothing creepy about this motorcycle. What a piece of history. I saw Kent Stotts turn on so many wind lights and smash so many records on this Honda CBR. It is a piece of history. Now, look at what Johnny's accumulated over the years. This comes from 30 plus years in the motorcycle business. I knew we'd see a lot. I didn't think that we would see Kent Stotts record smashing Honda in here, but again, you never know what you're gonna see. Let's see what else we can find. Ooh, Johnny, here's one that I absolutely love. This black and gold monster. I think I've seen it out on the track a few times. What's the story here? This uh, this bike started as a street bike. I built it for a 70-year-old guy, Elmer Cromer. Um, who 70 also, years old. Well, I'm also building a GS4 oh, right dear. there right now in that first lift. We'll show you that in just a quick second. God uh, bless him. It's a pretty neat little piece, a little uh, fluffed up two mil motor and a nitrous kit and nice little chassis. It's just kind of a play bike. Uh, but it's pretty cool to watch a 70-year-old guy go in 830s and 40s. I'm just saying it's pretty neat. I'd say so. Nice build by Johnny Turbo. Is that beautiful or what? Let's take a quick walk back in the shop, guys. There's a lot to see. Let's take a quick peek. Let's see if Johnny can give us a little show. Seven Second Super Street Championship Whoa. picture. Victor Gote rode that. Victor Gote. Good to see him. He's still out there and active. Yep. We cover him extensively on this YouTube channel. Well, here's your shop. Wow. Let's take a quick peek. We'll try not to interrupt anything. As you can see, they are slammed busy here at Exotic Cycle. Lots of projects, lots of customers. I'm sure Johnny can tell us more. Oh, Johnny, this is one heck of a shop. What's going on back here? A little bit of everything. I see that. <laughs> wow. Old school up on the lift. Yep. Cylinder head table right here. This is my employee's bike. Okay. It's got one leg, so we just did up down air shift on oh, it. That is so cool. What a great uh, guy. A bunch of customer stuff. This GS1100 is really cool. It's actually Elmer Cromer, the guy with the yellow high boost that okay. you just looked at. It's his. I just put a mocked up, or it's actually done, but it's got a high boost and rear wheel. It's got 94 inverted front end. Got you know GSXR stuff on it. It's got a set of flat slides. Just gonna be a street bike. Very cool. Cool looking street bike. Uh, turbo Busa build. Another Turbo Busa. Uh, little stretched out, fluffed up GSXR for local kid who just did an air shifter on it. Oh, very cool. And who do we have here working hard? <laughs> nice to see you, man. We just enjoyed your motorcycle. It's very cool. And Johnny, what I see over here, I'm sure it gets a whole lot of work at this shop. This is where the power is made, isn't it? Yep, there's a 250i Dynajet dyno right there. How much time do you spend on a dyno a week? Uh, it varies. I mean, sometimes, you know, a couple days in a row, and then I won't, might not use it for a few days. I actually got a guy on his way right here, on his way now to, to dyno a Hayabusa. Uh, over here, we have kind of a little machine corner where we're sawing up some blocks to make triple plants. Oh, wow. These are the triple clamps available that uh, you can get a lot of different places, right? Yep. I make them for Brock's. I make them for Brock's performance. This, oh this my gosh. This is making first off right now. Oh. I make 88 of these things right here. <laughs> uh, 
That is amazing. Yeah. Check it out, guys. We talked about the clamp. I need to get one of those. On the Next time I come down, I think we're going to do that. You need one. Your yes. Bike, your bike is squatted. My bike is slammed to the ground, squatted, as Johnny would say in truck terminology. The back end's lower than the front. <laughs> yes. That's not a good thing. That's squatted. This is amazing, man. You got one heck of a machine shop selection. You got it all. Well, I really appreciate you showing us this. And I, I got if anybody sees this and they want to get their bike dynoed, are you too busy? Do you have time? Yeah, what? Tell them to call me. I don't know how you have time to get it all in. I and, don't, but I do. <laughs> here's the million dollar question. Are we ever going to see you on a racetrack again? Uh, probably very slightly, but I'm done racing professionally, that's for sure. This is pretty cool. Look at the rafters of Johnny Turbo's shop. You need some body work? Well, he might just have what you need. This is probably comes from building a lot of drag bikes and replacing some crashed body work where you need to do the whole set. And also being in business 30 plus years. That's what'll help you accumulate a collection like this. Give him a call, mention Cycle Drag if you need anything. Well, Harry, you are Johnny's right hand man. You've been here five years. I want to thank you for all your hard work. What's it like working at this shop? Crazy, busy, um, fun sometimes. Sometimes it's stressful, but other than that, it's it's pretty cool. And I told you, you are my hero down here because you were telling me the story off camera. Yeah. Unfortunately, motorcycle accident, lost one of your legs. We're very sorry, but yeah. you're overcoming that. Trying to. <sighs> Every day is a struggle, but yeah, trying to trying to do what I can. Well, God bless you. Thank and you. I understand this motorcycle here, as Johnny said, custom made for you yeah pretty much how do you like it i like it um i had an o2 before that that had a pingle electric shifter on it but this one would, wouldn't work with the pingle all right so maybe yeah. we'll see you at the drag strip one of these days hopefully oh i like it well, yeah been there a few times but unfortunately had a couple little issues so. well we look forward to seeing you there keep up the good work guys check it out he is a warrior he's overcoming he is the man an inspiration. He's pressing on. Wish him well. Look at all the history and memories. Remember when Johnny had a team with little Nick Mazika? Here's one of his early builds. You see this little blue GS 1100 in the top left corner? My first Exoticycle little hot rod build. Great memories. What a ton of fun it is to look back. Wow, the week you moved in, you filled it up since then, didn't you? Yeah. Woo! Well, Johnny, if you weren't busy enough on two wheels, you boat race as well. Crazy. That is awesome. Do you still actively race your no. boat? No. No, done, done for now. Yep. Time to retire and enjoy life a little yep, bit, relax. right? Yeah, relax. Relax. Play with kid. Well... It's appropriate. You earned those stickers, my friend. Thank, <laughs> Thank you, you so much. We yep. appreciate Thank it. Thank you. I appreciate it. Good luck out at the strip. We can't wait to watch you. Done racing professionally, but one heck of a career. Thanks a lot for showing us. Again, Johnny Turbo, guys. Give him a call. Exotic Cycle. He's got the dyno. He can do just about anything you need. He's got a lot of good help, that's for sure. A lot of impressive motorcycles, whether it's a new school sport bike or an old school GS. Make sure you hit him up here at Exotic Cycle. I want to know who's buying one of these bikes too. Let me know. I also want to know what's your favorite motorcycle that we featured. Let us know down below in the comments. Was that awesome or what? I really hope you guys enjoyed that. That's what we do on Cycle Drag. We take you to areas you may not be able to go otherwise. We go behind the scenes and this time it was all about Johnny Turbo Dobrin's exotic cycle. What an amazing shop. What history he has hidden in there. And there's that phone number one more time, guys. In case you want that motorcycle that we showed you in there or you have any questions, call Johnny. Tell him you saw him on Cycle Drag and he will give you the hookup. If you know anything about any of the motorcycles that we saw, if you have any stories, if you had any of those motorcycles, leave it all down below. And I want to know from everybody who watched this far, what was your favorite motorcycle in there and why? Thanks a lot for coming along on this journey, guys. You know if there's anything fast motorcycles we are in. If you like that video, here's another one for you. Subscribe right in the middle. Cycle drag rolls on.